Good evening. I'd like to call to order the May 1st, 2018 regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Board. Uh, Brad, if you'd like to start us with a roll call. Sure. Uh, Raymond Layton? Here. Sonny Aluzzo? Here. Don Black? Here. Willie Newkirk? Here. Daryl Williams? Here. Pat Daughtry? Here. Jeffrey Bichette? Here. Jerry Walker? Here. We have a quorum. Okay. Thank you. See, our first item on the agenda is approval of previous minutes. Uh, everybody should have received uh, the minutes from our April 3rd meeting. Um, did everybody have a chance to review those? Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, do we have any additions or corrections? Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is an item of old business, and it is consideration of a plan unit development general plan for John Thomas Engineering and A-Size Construction Incorporated. It's for Hutton Point, a proposed 151 lot plan unit development on approximately 117 acre track located west of Old Airport Road and north of County Line Road. The property is further identified as a portion of Craven County Parcel ID number 7-106-001 and is located in Ward 3. Uh, Brad, it's my understanding that uh, uh, City Council is uh, requesting or suggesting a uh, continuance on this? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, At this point, I would like to introduce a motion to continue this matter until the June 5th meeting. Okay. We have a motion, and we have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, let's continue to our next meeting. <clears throat> okay, our next item is an uh, item of new business. It's consideration of a request by the City of Newburn to amend sections 15-210, street classifications, 15-214, Development Connectivity, and Section 15-216, Street Width, Sidewalk, and Drainage Requirements and Subdivisions. Uh, these are all portions of Appendix A, uh, Land Use, uh, the Code of Ordinances of uh, City of Newton. Brad, would you like to uh, give us a staff presentation on this one? Sure. So, um, you've seen this stuff before, and uh, we, we recommended approval previously, and uh, the, the version that you had seen previously was not um, quite where it needed to be for the developer's peace of mind and, and, this, and the Board of Alderman's peace of mind. So we went back to the table with developers and uh, mainly focusing on the issue of cul-de-sac width, uh, diameter. And what the fire department had wanted was 88-foot cul-de-sacs, which is the language that is presented to you here. And what we've, also, what we've added to um, make everybody happy, including the fire department, is a provision where cul-de-sac diameter can be reduced down to 8 feet in the event that on the final plat it is marked as no parking in that cul-de-sac that is, that is below 88 feet, but not less than 80 feet. Um, everything else I think should be quite familiar to you. Um, it's been quite a long process and several of your, your members have been to our meetings where we've been trying to hammer out the details of this. Uh, if anyone has any specific questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Okay. I'll um, uh, open, it, open it for board discussion. Right here. Um, and so, as Brad said, uh, myself, Don Black, and Sonny Luzo uh, sat in on the um, stakeholder meetings with developers. Um, we went in circles quite often, but we had some good productive discussions, which is what um, these uh, revisions and uh, uh, ordinance edits came out of. And I think um, the staff's done a very good job of putting these together based on those meetings. And I would say that uh, based on uh, not seeing any developers here, that uh, I think that we must... Uh, uh, John Thomas from Thomas oh, oh, I'm sorry, John, I didn't see you're hiding over there. <laughs> I think we've done a pretty good job. 
Uh, perhaps John's going to tell us that. Let's see. Um, so let's first have any board discussion before I open it up for public comment. Uh, the, the sidewalk, I'm, I'm not sure if I, if I remember what we finally decided on. It's going to still be only not six feet behind? It's the two feet, that's correct. Yeah. How much? It's two feet, which is the current standard. The current right. standard, okay. And is it five feet wide? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And is it true that the fire department will do these last changes before they were submitted to us? The fire department is in agreement with these changes. There was a uh, picture in the local newspaper right a few, few weeks ago when there was a fire at Taberta. Yeah. Of, a fire, of a fire truck trying to get past a parked car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Any other discussion before I open for public comment? Um, just a reminder, um, we are not the final decision on this. We are, our action is merely to make a recommendation to the Board of Albany. So, um, Whatever our recommendation is this evening, uh, this will go before the Board of Aldermen, likely at their next meeting. Um, uh, not the next one, okay. but so possibly the end of the month. Okay, and so then that would, uh, you know, the Board of Aldermen will be the final, final say on this. Okay, any other discussion? All right, um, hearing none, I'll open for public comment. Uh, if we can, first, let's have anyone that would like to speak in favor of the uh, request, and if you would please come up to the podium and uh, clearly state your name and address, and then we'll hear anything that you have to say. Okay, hearing none, uh, anybody that would like to speak against the request, please come up and speak. <coughs> Honestly, I uh, didn't know this was on the agenda, and not that I'm trying to do that from you, I, I didn't know it was on the agenda. And uh, also, I've not seen the current draft, so I don't really know what's in there. I'm kind of in between against and, and for, I think things, some of the things you're doing in there are really good. Um, the only thing that, uh, that I've had harped on the whole time is if you're doing away with the type of development that we're doing at the Blue Water Rise for the 20,000 square foot lots, we're still opposed to that. We still think that there's a need for um, large lots without having to use curb and gut. And I think there's a purpose for that. Other communities have that similar thing. Um, as far as the rest of it and what I've heard, um, I really can't really be objective to some of the things that have been done. Last stakeholders meeting I was not able to come to because of the personal issues in the family. And uh, so I've not read what y'all have in front of you and I really can't address that. But I feel certain that the non curving gutter streets have gone away. Is that still out of That's correct. Yeah. Okay. We we don't like that. And <clears throat> I think it was made the comment several times in this room that there were four of us sitting in this room that were the major players. And I feel like particularly one or two of our clients are major players in the city of New York. If you look over the last 10 or 12 years at the building permits for new homes that have been issued, they fall right in my pocket pretty much for single family homes. So with that said, we were hoping you would lend an ear to us and listen to us when we were asking for that sort of thing. Uh, the development that we have going on right now, Blue Water Rise, could be over 800 to 1,000 homes. Uh, half the project is planned, if you've seen the master plans, half of it is curb and gutter streets with the smaller lots, and approximately the other half are the very large lots, 20 plus thousand square feet without curb and gutter. Uh, currently, we, we plan pretty much what I call the east side. Uh, there's still a west side left uh, across the stream. On this property that's probably years down the road beyond what my bottom may be. That particular piece of property would lend itself more to even larger lots than 20,000 square foot and, um, and non curving gutter streets. Uh, as far as the, the east side, that we have, the Hutton Bay is one of the, the communities, the neighborhoods that we got before you. The other one was called Monitor Cape, and there was another one called Bimago Bay. Both of those have been approved. Um, I 
promise you'd reconsider that. Um, and we will be standing before the Board of Aldermen with that same argument to see if we can salvage at least that part of it. We're not objectionable to modifying that. Uh, if, if you recall, the Southwind project took forever to get it approved for y'all. It all had to do with between uh, our organization and your staff really couldn't narrow down what the street width needed to be. Then we brought in the Appendix D with the fire code. That even complicated it even more. The curb and gutter classification is straightforward. I mean, there's no argument with that. You can classify the streets and then it tells you in the ordinance what those streets are supposed to be. Running into the same thing with the HUD, HUD point project. That's why we continued it four, five, six times. Uh, that we got some time on. South we did. We were getting back up against the wall where we need to go to work. So we, we worked out, I thought, a, a fair resolution of the street width between staff and, and my client. And now we're moving forward with that development as we speak now. Uh, not knowing what's in that ordinance, I don't know what to address other than what I've just said. We should give that some thought, you know, about, you know, the type of streets, particularly the ones without a curb. Uh, I appreciate appreciate y'all's time. Thank you, John. So, what, what specifically don't you do you not like about the curb and gutter? For, 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 well, I, I don't have a problem with the curb and gutter. Even the current ordinance is fine with curb and gutter. I think some of the classifications may have changed and watered it down a little bit. Uh, actually, the, 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 the cold sack diameter was never a really big issue with us, is what it is. We, we do the appendix D in other communities. Um, and there was a lot of pressure to get rid of the appendix D, and, and that finally happened. But we were, we were going to go either way. Uh, the projects that we did, like the Fenwick project, we we did the big cold sacks in there. They're built. Uh, the South Wind has uh, one or two big cold sacks in there. So I mean, we were willing to do that. It's not the curb and gutter. Uh, your ordinance calls for if you have lots that meet that are not zoned that, but meet an R20 criteria you have the option to not put in curb and gutter where you just build the street with grass shoulders and swales on the side. That's what we're doing in, uh, in the South Wing project. The um, different road widths in there based on what we negotiated with the city uh, due to fire and, and other things. We basically modeled those streets from curb and gutter. We classified the streets, curb and gutter width, we dropped the curb off and that gave us the street width in there not having any other guidance in your ordinance of what it's supposed to be other than what your ordinance does say 20 foot. It says the streets should be 20 foot. Uh, that's where the kind of hang up is in there and it's at a minimum 20 foot. I know when that ordinance was written, the intention was to mirror what the county does for DOT roads in rural areas, 20 foot wide. Uh, when that ordinance was written many, many years ago with a guy named Greg Sakou. Okay. So, <clears throat> Our objection is, is to leave that in there, but maybe not like it is, but to clarify it even more to where you, like you do on the curb and gutter streets, you've got a uh, traffic count and you've got number of lots to define your curb and gutter streets. You can do that same thing with non-curb and gutter streets where your widths will get wider as you pick up more load on those streets, which is not in there now. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition of the uh, request? Okay. Hearing none, at this time I'll close the public comment and uh, bring it back for board discussion. So um, I'll let Brad come back in and back me up, but uh, I want to just uh, real quickly, it's my understanding that, well, so the way what's the the intent here is that for a development um, that's outside of city limits, part of the reason for these uh, amended requirements are these streets are being uh, the, the, the being annexed, so to speak, and they are now being city maintained, and so the city has. Uh, some minimum standard requirements that they want for maintaining streets. One of those standards is to eliminate roadside swales um, because those 
tend to become maintenance problems over time. Right. And um, I, I think that's part of what John is talking about. Um, but again, the purpose of what is trying to be accomplished here is to make all streets that are going to ultimately be owned by the city and maintained by the city be at a certain standard so that the city can maintain them properly. And, and that's, the, that's the purpose. Is that correct, Brad? Very broadly, yes. And also it enables the operation of uh, the, you know, the fire trucks and yes. sanitation trucks and things like that. Um, this doesn't, just to clarify, this doesn't entirely eliminate um, swales in the city or in roads and subdivision. Right. It's just for um, roads that have houses on them. So right. you can do a collector street uh, right. at 24 feet with swales with, with ditches instead of curb and gutter. And that's obviously much more economical and, and the preferred way to go. But for a street with a house on it, it in the city, um, the idea is to be curb and gutter right. all the way. Any discussion or questions from the board? I, I, I have to admit, I agree with that personally. You have to eliminate the swells in front of people's house. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion at this time. And, and remember, we are framing our motion either uh, we're recommending approval or recommending uh, disapproval. I would like to enter the uh, motion to recommend the approval to the Board of Al Alderman the amendments to the street classification, section 15-210, development connectivity, 15-214, section 15.216, street width sidewalk branch requirements and subdivisions, as well as Appendix A, the land use ordinance of the city of New York. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll I second okay. all of that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all of those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Uh, Any opposed? The motion carries. Okay, that uh, completes our new business for the evening. Um, as is customary, um, we'll take a minute or two, and uh, if there's anybody on our board that would like to come up and say something, now is your opportunity to do so before we adjourn. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'd like to introduce a motion to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion. No, and we have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody.